Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. Back-to-back days with us here for you. And that's because we're going to talk a little recruiting again. Now, a little bit differently than what we did yesterday, because we were talking about high school recruiting. And I think all of them, yeah, all of them were 2025 guys. We're going to talk now about guys that, if they're in the mix, they are going to be contributors in some way on the 2024 team at K-State, because we're going to shift our focus to the transfer portal and the transfer portal opened up earlier this week in college football. Uh, it's only open for a couple of weeks. This is a shorter period than what it was when it opened up back at the end of the 2023 season. And K-State, I think that there are maybe more guys that they're going to be open to looking at than people would imagine. But it's going to be a pretty refined focus because this team, as we know, they don't have a ton of holes. And I don't think they feel like they're lacking talent on this roster but they want to make sure that every guy that they can have in position is the best possible guy so there are a couple of portal names that have already popped up and probably the one that we've heard about the longest is an offensive lineman from Arkansas Andrew Chambly um what is the 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 deal here because this is one that I mean I think even before we took it seriously we were hearing about uh, Shambly in in the portal and being connected to K State in some way. So what what have you heard on the Arkansas transfer? By the way, it's it's just weird that a lot of the reporting for Andrew Chambly has been from uh, Pete Thamel because it's all through an agency. That that's the weird yeah. part of like college football, college sports where we're at right now. Uh, because technically Andrew Chambly wasn't in the transfer portal uh, before it opened, obviously because he's not a graduate transfer. And Pete Thamel had already reported about visits that were about to be taken. <laughs> and I think that's why everybody kind of like didn't really take it seriously. But he's a serious K-State target right now. Like he's currently in Los Angeles at UCLA uh, right now. And as soon as he leaves LA, he's flying to Manhattan for an official visit this weekend. And he's somebody that K-State really, really wants. And it's a little bit of a surprise, at least to me. Uh, from the outside that they would be so willing to go for another transfer offensive lineman. But it also kind of makes sense because he's a true tackle. Easton Kilty, probably not a true tackle. So they could do the Cooper BB move where they slide him inside and get their best five. And Chanley is somebody that you should be really excited about if you're a K-State fan. That K-State's in the mix. He's one of the best offensive linemen currently in the transfer portal. Another topic for another day, but I just thought of this that with the spring and the winter window, we should do recruiting rankings for the the winter window and then a fresh batch for the spring because it gets a little skewed and gets a little hazy when you look at where guys are currently ranked because Champlain is a guy that I think is like a top 400 transfer right now, but that's with the winter guys already in and in that same ranking. But he's one of the best offensive linemen currently in the portal freshman team all sec last year and with the sec rules of no transfer to an sec school it kind of makes his list of schools look a little wonky for a guy that's one of the best offensive linemen in the portal i believe he's taking he's on the visit to ucla um colorado is also in the mix k-state is in the mix maryland is in the mix and smu is in the mix and it would probably be the most beneficial to k-state obviously if they were able to just close the deal this weekend and drive that home because you probably don't want him taking extra visits because not only is there more competition the longer that it goes out but we're we're, we're in this world right now where his price probably increases the longer that it plays out yeah you go through and and you kind of start to to look around and and do some of the digging here you talked about hey he's not like one of the the highest rated guys as it stands in totality of the portal situation, but you dive through and you go and you're trying to piece all this together. He's, I mean, you, you can add it up. It's going to take a lot for you, but it, he does come across as like, he's probably a top 20 guy currently in the portal. So it's one of those deals where it's like out of what's available to you, you're not going to find much better than him. And it comes at a position where K state feels like they can improve. And at the very least, like, you're getting depth added in that situation, uh, which I think is significant because I think uh, we know that this K-State team, they have a lot of possible offensive linemen that I think the staff is high on, but 
the experience isn't there. Um, and here you get an opportunity with a guy that he was a four star coming out of high school and was highly thought of when he ended up at Arkansas. And maybe obviously Connor Riley has done a good job with offensive linemen in his possession before. Maybe this is one that would uh, work out for K State. So I think this is an interesting name. And I, I think you make a good point that early on, everybody saw that, you know, family was reporting in and it was through like a, an NIL agency or whatever. And so people didn't take it seriously. But as time has gone on, this has become a legitimate name to know in K State circles. Yeah, I think that there's no issue for me taking extra offensive linemen. I mean, I've talked about trying to maximize K State's window here with Avery Johnson, and Chambly's eligibility lines up perfectly with Avery Johnson. So if you can really maximize that window and give him the best possible offensive lineman and weapons around him, I think that's what K-State needs to do. And it seems like that they've, they're have they on the same page as what we've kind of talked about. All right, well, let's uh, flip over because that's the only offensive transfer that we're going to talk about today. Everything else comes on the other side at two positions where either we know that there's a need or it's a little hazy on what is K-State actually going to need. But it does appear that based on what they're targeting, they want to add on the defensive line, more specifically the interior defensive line, and then at linebacker. So let's start up front there. Uh, we talked about defensive linemen yesterday in high school recruiting, but a name that's out there that ha has some significant suitors is Carlos Allen, a defensive lineman that had recently played at Kennesaw State. Uh, and K-State is in the – I think they already have visits lined up with him both on campus and and in home, uh, what's the latest on Carlos Allen, the former Al? Ooh, so number one, Kennesaw State, probably going to be one of the schools that I do my uh, first dynasty with <laughs> at when NCAA 25 drops. But uh, Carlos Allen is, uh, I guess everybody is a new entry to the transfer portal when it just opened a couple days ago. But he's a guy that it's a premium position right now in the transfer portal not just for K-State, but you see a lot of schools are all trying to attack defensive tackle. And K-State's already offered, I believe it's four or five defensive tackles because they know that they have a need for one. And they're just kind of willed, or, uh, trying to narrow it down and figure out who their top targets are. Uh, but Carlos Allen already has a, official visits lined up. Another one because he's with an agency that Pete Thamel is breaking it on. Uh, but he has uh, a visit with Cal uh, on an end home April 24th. He'll be at Houston for an official visit May 3rd through the 5th, Indiana May 6th through the 7th. And he also has an, or an in home visit with Indiana April 23rd. And then he'll be at K State May 10th, and K State's having an in home with him April 25th. So again, it's not like a crazy long list of suitors for Carlos Allen, but I think that you'll start to see that with other defensive tackles and offensive linemen that you'll see a bunch of teams go after these guys. But I, I like where K-State sits right now. An underrated kind of maybe a factor with Carlos Allen is that he wouldn't be the first Kennesaw State transfer to K-State because Sincere Mason uh, was a former Owl as well. So maybe you have an in there. They've been really good at FCS to Power 5 transfers. And he fits the mold. I mean, I believe he's 6'1", 305. He's a big dude. And they really just need depth more than anything because I think that we're all okay with Uso Sayamalo starting at defensive tackle. But it's after him where you get a yeah. little bit nervous because Damien Alalio has played in a lot of games that are still kind of undersized. But Carlos Allen is a guy that can come in and play and you probably don't lose anything from a size standpoint well and you, you talk about success in the portal from you know group of five or fcs guys up to k-state it's not just in general there and then you, you say sincere mason who came from kennesaw state but they also have success taking g5 interior defensive linemen to a, yeah. a next level timmy horn came from charlotte and the year after he was at k-state found himself in the NFL with the Atlanta Falcons. So th this is a, again, th this staff, they, they're not making big splashes constantly in the portal, which is tougher to do in football because we know that the way that the sport is ran, it goes to the big dogs quite a bit more. 
but they they know the right guys to go out and find. And Carlos Allen uh, seems to profile as a dude that they would be able to have success with. So this is this is going to be a fascinating one to watch, and certainly is a position of extreme need for K State because, like you said, you feel comfortable with Uso starting. Um, Damian Eli Leo undersized in some ways, but even that you feel okay. But you you want to have more than just two guys that you trust at that position, especially because like defensive line is one of those positions that you're going to find yourself in some really weird spots. Like it's really easy for those guys to get nicked up and have to miss, you know, yeah. a series or multiple series throughout a game. You need bodies, especially, I mean, the, I mean, I obviously I'm in no physical shape, but like those guys are going to get worn out more because of what they're having to do and the demands of the position. Like, the position demands you be a bigger body, but that also makes it tougher on you later in the game. So I, I think that this is a, a fascinating one for K-State and one that'll be important to watch moving forward. Now we can shift back in the defense and we can go to linebacker, another spot that we know that K-State has some interest in. And we'll start with uh, another report of visits that are getting lined up, but Cal linebacker transfer Miles Jernigan uh, I guess he he just didn't want to do all that travel in the ACC this coming year. Uh, what do you know about Miles Jernigan? So Miles Jernigan is an interesting one to me because he played almost exclusively outside linebacker at Cal. So I'm curious if he would stay on the outside or if K-State is thinking about, okay, if we land Miles Jernigan, does he move inside? Does Austin Moore move inside? How do, how does how do they get the best three linebackers that they want on the field if they get Jernigan? Uh, but Jernigan has five or four official visits lined up already, which it's crazy how fast this portal cycle feels like it's moving already. Because I mean, there are multiple, multiple, multiple guys that are out there that already have like four or five visits planned, and the portal opened up two days ago. So everything's going very fast, but he'll actually be at K-State this weekend, uh, April 20th and 21st. And then Louisville, the 22nd, 23rd, UCF, the 24th through the 26th, and Duke, the 26th and 27th. So again, it, it's four schools, two ACC, two big, or, and then two Big 12. And it's at a position where K-State not only needs probably a starter, at the mic, but I think that they also need just another guy that's playable on the outside. And I think that Miles Jernigan kind of fits that, or he could shift inside because he's 6'3, 235. I mean, he's he's a big dude. So he could probably play in both spots. But you probably need a depth piece that linebacker. You probably need a starting mic because Jake Clifton's status is still kind of up in the air. But I also like the thing about linebacker right now is that I really like the younger pieces at linebacker and it just feels like they have a lot of scholarship allocation at linebacker. So I, I wonder if it's miles Jernigan and another transfer linebacker, or if they'd just be okay with just Jernigan or just another linebacker. Well, we can talk about another linebacker and that is Alec Marenko, a New Mexico transfer that's in. And this is probably one that, um, not like not as high profile with uh, some of the newsbreakers out there on this one, but uh, this seems to be a, another linebacker that K-State uh, really has their eyes on. Yeah, this is definitely one that K-State fans should know about. Um, he, he isn't taking an official visit to K-State until May 4th, but K-State's having it in home with him April 25th and 26th. Uh, he was the leading tackler for New Mexico this season, despite being banged up for some of the season. And he is the true Mike that I think K-State is going after. So that, that's where I bring up, like, I wonder if it's Jernigan or Marenko or Marenko and Jernigan in an ideal world. But they're getting, uh, whoever ends up getting Marenko is getting a guy that has been on the portal for a long time, actually, which is strange of why his recruitment is just starting to heat up because he was just at Arizona. And then he's taking the visit to K-State. So it, it's probably a Big 12 battle. There's a few SEC schools that are also lingering for Marenko, so it's probably better for K-State, again, if they can wrap this up even faster than 
uh, the visit May 4th. But I like where they're positioned right now uh, because he has already had already has a visit on the schedule. And I mean, if you're K State, you already got past his first visit of Arizona and he didn't commit there. So I mean, you got that as well. Yeah, I think this is going to be uh, one for K State to you, you look at and you see there's there's a lot to like here. And you talked about leading New Mexico in tackles and everything, but think uh, think of how many linebackers are in the portal uh, over the course. And like you said, this it's not just currently, but it's what was there at the start of this process through the winter and everything. I mean, he's a top fifty transfer portal linebacker, which to some might sound like oh, that's a lot. But I think that's still a significant number when you consider just how many guys go in and you consider the level that he's coming from. Uh, this would be one that, uh, I again, we don't know how it's going to work out when these guys actually get here because K-State certainly, certainly has had their share of guys that in the past come from the portal and you don't hear anything about them afterwards. Or uh, in the case of Brandon Jennings, he just disappears <laughs> after like a couple weeks and goes somewhere else. Um, but this is one that, when he got here, if it happened for K State, I, I would expect maybe we we hear that name quite a bit because I, I just I like some of the 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 track record here. Yeah, I, I like a lot of what he brings to the table. Uh, by the way, Brandon Jennings, I believe, is now at, Miss, at Mississippi State. Okay, so he's on he's on his fifth total school because after he went from K State to somewhere else he went to a juco so five years or five schools in four years for brandon jennings pretty impressive uh list there uh but marenko brings a lot to the table that i think that he could really excel at k-state and play that middle linebacker position and play it pretty well this is just uh an in general portal thought that i was just thinking uh not just today but yesterday it, it seems like all of the hype about how crazy this spring portal window is going to be uh just from people around like josh pay was one of the people that mentioned it it doesn't feel as crazy as it seemed like it was like being hyped up to be right now i i think it's all been pretty overrated i i think i think it's a lot of paid actors by the people that don't like some of the way that college athletics is structured right now and they're like just trying to, to fear monger out there. It's like, I don't know, like just deal with it. It's your job. Like see where it goes. Like, is it hectic? Maybe, but whatever. Like, I, I don't know. I it's still, I don't think that some of these big names have entered the portal or that it will ever happen. Like, I just think it was people trying to act like, Oh, this is the worst thing ever. The same people that like, oh, you can't have kids sign in the summer. I'm like, no, like, it's all right. Like Big You'll picture, big picture, not just looking at case eight because case eight's going after some good pieces that I, I think that they would fit in well. But from like a national perspective, like the biggest name that's probably entered is Caden Proctor, who we already knew was going to enter the portal and go, to Al go back to Alabama anyway. Like, or the it, other would be Cormani McLean from Colorado, which it's like, oh, shocker, somebody jumped off that dumpster fire. Like, uh, by the way, a guy that had kind of a dumpster fire high school recruitment is now jumping from the dumpster fire that he committed to and trying to find a different landing spot. Like there's just so many things with it. Like it's, it's not been anything unexpected to this point in time. I it, don't think, I think it's been overblown. And especially right now, like I feel like I'm jinxing it, putting it out in the air, but like it, it's a pretty low key at KC, like Max Marsh entered the portal, but wasn't a scholarship player. He, he just had a tumultuous time at K-State because he played quarterback, then he played safety, and then he played quarterback again. So, like, I, I don't really necessarily blame him for leaving and trying to, just to find a better fit. And then Javon Banks couldn't play D-tackle because he couldn't keep on weight. And then he just got passed by some of the younger defensive ends. So, like, uh, obviously, like, that is good enough to, like, want to leave as well. It's so, like K-State even hasn't had, like, a crazy like shocker one to me at least yeah no not not at all i think that it's been calm for now doesn't mean that things won't change but at this point in time it doesn't feel like they will 
Uh, if they do, we'll have you covered at K-State Online. So head over there, get everything figured out with high school and college recruiting that K-State has going on with the portal open in both basketball and football uh, because K-State will have basketball visitors this weekend. So find out a little bit more about that over at kstateonline.com. We'll be back tomorrow to round out the week with a Friday show. But for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Both. Thanks for watching K-State Online.